today what we're going to do is we're going to look through this uh, ecosystem. I created some code here and what we're going to do is look at an ecosystem and try to actually play a simulation of an ecosystem. Up here if you click the run button you can see our little simulation here. It says you are creating an ecosystem that has deer and wolves in it. The deer are the prey and the wolves are the predators. Press the return key to continue. So I'm going to press return. It says in this ecosystem your deer will eat grass. How much grass will be available? If you say 300, then 300 deer will be able to eat. Or if you say 400, 400 deer will be able to eat. So I'm going to say uh, 300, I'm going to say 500. That means that 500 deer would be able to eat. So that means I basically gave enough grass for 500 deer to be able to eat in my ecosystem. Press enter. Uh, each year a certain amount of grass will grow in your ecosystem. How much grass will grow each year? I'm going to say uh, 500. Again, so that means that we'll start off with 500 and that means that 500 enough grass will grow for 500 deer each year. So, so far that's what we have. We have the amount of grass and the new grass and now we have to decide how many deer are going to be in our ecosystem for our simulation. I'm going to say 300 just to start off with. And um, how fit are your deer for your environment? This is a natural selection question, meaning one meaning that these deer are not fit at all. They're, they're very likely to die. 100 being that they are the most perfect deer. They'll probably survive no matter what. I'm going to say somewhere in the middle, let's say 70%. That means they have a 70% chance of survival to the next generation. Um, then how likely are your deer to reproduce? Pick a number between 1 and 100. Uh, I'm just going to say, you know, 80% likely. So that means that if they are fit and they survive, then they will, there's an 80% chance that they will reproduce. That was, that's what that means, basically. So our deer, our 300 deer basically have a 70% fitness rate, meaning there's a 70% chance they'll survive and an 80% chance that they'll reproduce. Uh, how many wolves now in our ecosystem? I'm not going to put too many wolves in because I'm afraid that if I put in, you know, like 100 wolves, they're going to eat all the deer over too quickly. So I'm going to say, you know, I don't know, 50 wolves just to start off with, see how that does. Okay, how fit are your wolves for your environment? This is the same as the deer. I'm going to say 80% uh, uh, likely to survive because they're very fit. Let's say they're very fast wolves. And to reproduce, I'm going to say, I don't know, 60. That means that there's a 60% chance that if they survive, they will also reproduce. And here we go. Here's our results. So if you look right here, these numbers, this is what we put in as our as our variables, uh, all the stuff we already put in. And then down here is our survival rate. So our deer started off at 300. After the first year, there was 345, then 389. And if you go all the way to the end over here, there was 1,000 at by the time the simulation was over. And then for wolves, they started at 55. They went down a little bit to 47 right here. Then they went all the way down to 35. So they were getting lower, lower, lower. And by year 10, they were at 35. Okay. And the if you want to see your data without looking at the numbers, all the numbers themselves, you can always click on this graph here. And it kind of shows you that uh, the deer increased, 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 and increased. And as the deer were increasing, uh, it kind of looks like the grass was growing, growing, growing up until this point about right here. There, be, there started to become so many deer that there wasn't enough grass. And so the grass started going down. And eventually, if this deer population keeps increasing, I what I believe will happen is the grass will deplete and there won't be enough grass for the deer anymore. And that's partially because these wolves are staying around 50. The, the wolf population is staying basically flat. They're kind of in homeostasis, meaning that they're not really getting that much bigger and they're not really getting that much smaller. If they're, if I had started off with more wolves, maybe if I had started off with 100 wolves instead, um, I might have done better. So what I'm going to do is copy this data into a text file just so that I have it right here, just so that I have this for the next round. And what we're going to do is we're going to try again. Let me move this so we can see everything a little better. So our amount of grass we started off with was 500 last time. So let's click run. We're going to click stop up here and then run. All right, so we're going to try again. Click the return key. Last time I started off with 500 grass. This time I'm going to start off with, you know, a little bit less because it seemed like we had too much grass last time. So 300 and I'm going to say 300 again for how, mu how much grass grows each year. So I said that we're going to have 300 grass and uh, there's going to be 300 grown each year. Last time we said there was 300 deer. Let's just keep that the same and see what happens. And uh, we last time we said the deer was 70% fit. This time let's make them a little bit less fit, maybe 60. That means they're less likely to survive from year to, from year to year. And then the likelihood that they will 
reproduce. Last time we said 80. They were getting a little too populated though. So let's try and say, let's try a, a 60%. So now our deer are less fit and they're less likely to survive. How is that gonna affect the deer population? Let's keep the wolves the same. Let's say the wolves are at 50. And let's say, let's keep the fitness the same. We said it was 80 last time, so we'll keep it at 80. And this time though, let's say that the likelihood that they reproduce is a little bit higher. Let's say 75% higher. So now when I press enter, we're gonna see the new data. And this time it looks like uh, our deer went from 230 to 173 to 113, then to 49. And it looks like after that, all the deer died out. And as a result, in the same year, there was 47 wolves. They were doing okay, right? 56, 61, 72, 67. And then all of a sudden the wolves all die too. Let's look at the graph here. You can see that once the uh, deer get lower here, it's kind of hard to see because of the grass getting larger and larger, but once the all the deer die, then all the wolves die as well. That's because the wolves eat the deer. So once all the deer are gone, once all the deer are gone, uh, all the wolves are gone as well. So in this situation, we failed twice. We couldn't save the deer and we couldn't save the wolves. So if I go ahead and copy this in, this data in here, we can now try again to see if we can get a more uh, 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 a population that's going to be at homeostasis. So I'm going to reload the page again to st start a new simulation. And this time, let's do a more realistic. Maybe we could try and do something a little more realistic. So we've been saying 500, 300 grass. Let's say, let's say 600 grass this time and 600 growth. But let's put way more deer in. Let's put like a thousand deer this time because and let's keep it at 60 percent and 60 percent 60 percent likely to survive 60 percent likely to reproduce so we're keeping the 60s the same but we're making the deer much higher this time at a thousand and let's go ahead and try the wolves let's keep them at let's put them a little bit higher since we have more deer this time let's put them at 10 percent at 100 and let's make them an 80 percent fitness and let's say that they're going to be an 80% likely to survive. So I'm making the likelihood to reproduce a little bit higher in this one. And I'm going to hit enter to see what happened this time. And again, by this year, by the, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, by the sixth, by the seventh year, all the deer again died out because it seems like this fitness is too low. If the deer are only 60% likely to survive in an environment, it seems like they die out after about seven years. So we actually need to make this fitness thing much higher. So let's keep everything the same, but this time I'm gonna try and, this time I'm gonna try uh, to leave everything the same at 500 and 500 and the deer at 1,000 again. And I'm gonna try the deer though at a 90% fitness and a 90% likelihood to reproduce. That way they are very likely to reproduce and likely to survive. And let's keep the wolves about the same at 50 or no, no, I'm sorry, 100. And let's have them produce at 80% like fitness and an 80% of likelihood to survive. This time we have a graph where neither animal dies out. It's gonna take a second for it to load, but you can see here, um, we have things kind of at homeostasis now. The grass stays about the same every round because the, the deer, which are at around 1,000, are eating about, 500 deer are able to eat, and then of those 500, maybe 400 or so are able to reproduce. That's why, or about 350 are able to reproduce. That's why it's staying between 800 and 900. So uh, the wolves are, uh, the, the, the deer are in homeostasis because they're between 800 and 900. They're not decreasing, they're not increasing. They're staying about in a, in a good place, okay? Same thing with the wolves. They're at about, you know, 100, 106. They're varying between 80 and 120, like, they're not getting too small, not too large. So this scenario here seems to be a pretty good scenario to keep this environment in check. So I'm going to put this here. And uh, that's our shows us a little bit about a simulation of a wolf and deer ecosystem.